Antique stores are easy places in which to lose track of time. The clothing from another era has a way of transporting me through time. Sometimes the clothing whispers clues about the creator or the person who wore it. Tiny construction details are a testimony to the time period when it was made and the skill of the maker. We have such fun recreating those construction techniques for you. Before we get lost in time, let's see what we can learn. Our modern day heirlooms will have their stories of their own to tell. Welcome to my sewing room. I love classic baby clothing, and this classic baby, baby outfit has just so much flair. Made out of a wonderful handkerchief linen, the little blue boy's suit has the most wonderful details. The piping is of the baby silk dupioni. I want you to look at this wonderful ruffle on the sleeve, which has baby silk dupioni and this wonderful little band. I'm going to turn the sleeve around so you can see. There's a little peekaboo in the sleeve of the baby blue check silk dupioni. Coming down the front, this wonderful band once again with the silk dupioni check and the linen, beautiful pearl buttons, but looky here. We have another peekaboo on the side with the silk dupioni and of course a very classic tailored machine embroidery on the front. What a lucky little baby boy that is going to get this bubble. The technique we're going to share is this band that has the silk dupioni and then the uh, linen on the edge. Let me just turn it over to show you that really it's lined with linen. Okay, how do we get this wonderful band that has the, the smaller band on the side? Two pieces of fabric, one of them a good bit shorter than the other, sew it together at the top. And then as you can see, we have a piece then with a shorter piece and a longer piece. We're going to press the seam toward the longer piece and fold it up. You can see how that appears. Here it is finished. We folded it up and let me turn this over. So there will be no seam, there will be no hem. It'll, this will simply go into the ruffler and we're going to ruffle it up to make those beautiful ruffles. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my dear friend and business colleague, Shirley Schooley. Shirley is a creative consultant for FAF USA. Shirley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Well, thank it's you good for to be this here. adorable baby Thanks. bubble. Oh, show us <laughs> how you did this. I will do that. This is so easy and uh, so effective, and you have lots of uh, possibilities with it. Uh, Martha had gone through that just a little bit, but if you'll look at my sample here, um, actually, this was the, the pieces that we had done, and of course you start out with, a, or you finish up with a flat piece and then do whatever it is that you want to do with it. Uh, but when you do this, you select two contrasting fabrics. In the case of the little bubble, we used a checked silk dupioni and a handkerchief linen, but of course any fabric will work for you. And the secret is to get the measurements right. So you have to make a decision. The first one is you have to decide how wide that you want the top part of the ruffle to be. Uh, so that's your first measurement. Then you need to decide about the band. And in this case, we use this very narrow uh, band for the little boy suit, but sometimes you might want something that is a wider band. So what we will do is calculate that. So you have to know the band width and you, you choose the top fabric, choose your width, allow for a seam allowance for these narrow bands, make the seam allowance the same as the width of the band, that supports the band. If you're using a very wide band, then you will want a, uh, a regular kind of seam allowance and account for that. The secret is that you cut the back fabric that will create the band uh, the width of the original piece, your front piece, plus twice the width of the band that you have chosen. And then it is a simple sewing process. You can see here what we have done on this piece is we have simply sewn it together. In this case, we're using a half inch wide band on this little example. And it's just a simple seam that you create. 
and uh, put it together. Then when you uh, get through, you'll want to press this seam so that the seam itself is pressed toward the dark part of the fabric. If you can see this example here, so that, that it, um, it that f allows that band to form. And then when you turn it and meet the raw edges, what you have is this nice band trim. So the back side and the band on the front, one fabric, the main r uh, ruffle or other kind of trim is on the front. So it's a very simple sort of process. It's kind of that sort of sewing that maybe we learned to do when we were first learning to sew. Uh, you will just want to set your machine so that you get the seam allowance that you want and um, stitch along and there you are. All you do is turn and press and then treat it as though it were one single piece of uh, fabric. Can you show them once again, put that, that sweet little suit and you can just show them that little ruffle that goes down the front, how sweet it is. And then you gathered it up or ruffled it up. And, and when you think about this tiny little trim, to put any kind of, uh, that small a piece on something would have been difficult. But notice that you have, of course, this nice linen on the back. So that this is really simple to do, but it's very impressive to do. You can, as I said, you could make this a wider band if you were going to use a wide band on uh, your trim, then you would just use a standard seam allowance and account for that. Shirley, that is such a wonderful, wonderful trick and Thank such you. a beautiful little bubble. Isn't and this now cute? Shirley had, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> and now Shirley has some mm -hmm. sewing inspirations to share with you, which are gorgeous. Shirley, I love the technique now you did it on the baby uh, bubble. Mm -hmm. And look at, is this the same technique here? This is the very same technique. Look at this ruffle. This double ruffle. This is this wonderful silk uh, check. And then the uh, silk dupioni gives and, the same effect. And Beautiful. What, a, what wonderful decorator colors. Everything yes. doesn't have to be in pink and blue and white. I mm -hmm. love the way you've done machine embroidery. And this ruffle is simply fabulous. And it's so easy. Oh, that's <laughs> our main point right there. Look at this wonderful pillow. Tell us about this, Cheryl. Well, this was all done on the embroidery machine and it's a layered embroidery uh, so mm -hmm. that the uh, stippling is done with an embroidery design and this other design in a blendable uh, thread is beautiful on there and then this was stitch building in the hoop so these beautiful machine stitches uh, you can put into the hoop and you stitch those and then sew it together and, and then there beads. you are and beads but have I to really have a little flash and dash <laughs> love the flash i really want to show our viewers the machine embroidery over the buttonholes. Well, and these, oh. the machine, the, the buttonholes were machine embroidered along oh. with the little design. So it's isn't that quick and easy and beautiful? Beautiful. Really nice. Okay, the beautiful little day gown. Let me pull it over here. Very simple with the three tucks on each side, a tiny little white on white embroidery, a little white on white embroidery on the sleeve, and very simple out of pique, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite baby fabrics. A little bit warmer. That's right. Than and, just the batiste. And a little bit heavier for perhaps a little boy. I got you. And I love what you've done here. Now, this would be a... Uh, this is embroider on ready-made. And this is a little jacket blouse that I purchased. And if you turn it on the back, oh. I was able to do this in my large hoop, all in one hooping. In one hooping. That gorgeous design. How much, yeah. well, how easy, too, to do it in one hooping. That I is right. It. And this beautiful quilt. Tell me what you said you call these quilts. I call these my nap quilts. They're great to lay over your feet if you want to lay, lay down in the afternoon if you're not sewing. And the inspiration here is take those gorgeous stitches on your machine, make some blocks, put those blocks together, and you get something gorgeous that you'll love forever. I love quilts this size, and my grandchildren especially love quilts this size. Right. They get up and, and go lay down on the couch in the morning, they say, where's my quilt? And I have a number of these I bring out. And this is all Nalona, and it has cotton batting, so it'll be there so forever. So soft. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. And now Shirley has a very favorite, so quick, so easy idea for you. Shirley, that is the most adorable little burp pad I've ever seen. Tell us about it. Well, I will. And you know, Martha, this has been the one that was so popular because I sent them directions out on the message board that we actually put this in your free project section. So I thought I'd bring it along and let people actually see 
uh, this. This is the completed burp cloth. Most people enjoy making these from uh, pre-folded diapers because it's easy, it's quick, you get this wonderful padded surface. But of course you could do this with several layers of fabric if you chose. This one, I have this cute little circus baby design and I have chosen a fabric that goes with it. And you'll notice that this, uh, this is all backed. So here's the way we do this. This is pretty simple. You start out with a piece of fabric, just a, uh, uh, something of your choice. The nice thing is that you can get about three of these out of a length of about 24 inches of fabric. So it's really a great uh, way to uh, make some special things for special babies. The secret is to cut your fabric as, as has been done here, where it is exactly the width of the diaper that you have chosen. And we're going to have a two inch band, which is just about right to leave room for some embroidery. And you want twice the width of your chosen band. Uh, so you cut it that way. You don't have to be very precise. You can lay the diaper on there and cut that thing down um, so that you have this extra four inches. If you wanted this on the back, you would have the four inches for the back also. Then the first step is to um, take this and sew it right here two inches from the edge. You're going to make just, you're going to just sew these things together two inches from the edge. And then you simply take the trick here, you simply take the fabric and fold it up and form a pleat so that it comes up against here and you're going, and you'll want to pin that down there where it, it looks pretty good. Then you've stitched this like so. And then we have taken this one and we have stitched that pleat in. We've stitched all the way around here, leave an opening in the cloth, and then you're ready to turn it, stitch it across the um, top. Let me get back here and show this to you, and you're done. It takes about 10 minutes. It takes me longer to tell you about it than it does to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it over again. Let them see how cute that this, is. Oh these are God. just, you know, it's such a quick and easy thing. And you can do them fancier or you can do them cute. You can do them however you would like for them to be. Uh, and there you got it. I let the design sometimes tell me what fabric. And sometimes I have some fabrics and let the fabric tell me what kind of design. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most adorable project. And as you said, it's on the website. It the is on the, website. on the website. For all and your now viewers. we have some designer techniques to share with you. I'm so happy to have as my guest today, my dear friend and business colleague, Amelia Johansson. Amelia is the associate editor of So Beautiful Magazine. Amelia, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's great to be here. I love what you've done with this beautiful little Kent State Museum antique. Tell us about it. Well, it, it's, uh, this was an original antique from Kent State, and it had what is really probably traditionally called lattice work on the shoulders uh, and on the pockets here as well. I like to call it crisscross bias. It sounds a little more updated. And the bubble of two was a little too vintage for children today. I didn't see a lot of children wanting to wear this or mothers wanting to put them on in that particular style bubble. So I reinterpreted the technique on a cute little dress, which was uh, really fun to do and I think turned out very cute. The little lattice work on the shoulders. So let me pull it down so our viewers can see. And the way we, as you can see in each one of those lattices, there is a, um, I'm using my shoulders here, there's a <laughs> little, um, here this is a machine embroidery, but you could use a hand embroidery as well if you don't have a machine, and that holds the lattice work in place and just really works to you know stabilize the, the work where it is on the garment. Now what about these cute little pockets? And that was just a, you know, a touch of detail to, to carry the, the element through on the entire garment, and it turned out really sweet. Oh, it did. That shows how you did it. It's a, it's a relatively simple technique. It takes a lot of uh, bias, but it's, it's again, it's very simple to do. You're just going to cut a piece of bias um, to create the tubes, which you'll need. Um, you'll need to stitch up, and here we had a 3 8 inch tube. So you'll make sure you have enough, you know, you're stitching it with a seam allowance, so your tube will end up about 3 8 inch wide. This is a tube turner tool, which you insert in there, it clicks onto it, and you run it down, and it just flips it very easily. So you're gonna end up with, with a tube. I like to um, press the seam allowance to the back side, but you could do it to the side as well. You just wanna make sure there's no seam showing when you do this. 
um, to get your little pattern piece, I just took a section of the this shoulder and figured out about how much I'd need. It's a little over an inch there and use the pattern piece for that. You're going to want to trace that off with a with a marker onto um, this is a sticky stabilizer. And you're tracing it onto the back of the sticky and when you um, pull that apart then it is very sticky here and I'm going to have to do that here so I can show you how to attach, put these bias bars on it. This actually pulls apart and you can see your trace pattern which you traced on the back side. Um, then you're simply going to, here you have cut your bias into various little bars and we are going to lattice it just like you would any type of lattice situation. I like to start with a crisscross in the center and then you will alternate you know, over, under, over, under until you have that looks a little odd there, but you basically come out, and this is the back side with the shoulder pocket and the, or excuse me, the shoulder, in, what do we call that? The shoulder insert, I uh -huh. guess we would call that, <laughs> and the um, pocket topper. They're all traced off there. You flip it around, and this is what you end up with after you've evenly. And you know, you can leave, here we have a very tiny little amount left between the bias. You could leave even more if you wanted it a little more open. The original garment was a little more open, as is this. Um, before you're going to want to stitch your embroidery down, you're going to want to, let me take this one back so I can show you a little bit easier. You're going to want to stitch around these just to stabilize and make sure your bias stays in place. And then you can um, you rinse all this, all rinses right off in water, which makes it you know really easy. You don't have to pull it or cut it or anything. You just want to soak it for a while. Then you can restabilize on your machine embroidery machine. You know, put it in your hoop on again a sticky stabilizer, and um, set it up so it just stitches a dot or a flower in this case in each little join or every other little join. Um, if you could hand me the dress real I quickly. Okay. Um, I chose to use a, a, a different color scheme, so it pulled out some of the color in the, um, in the dress. And a great way to do this when you buy fabric, you have a little dot scheme down the side of the salvage. And it will, it's really a great way to pull out which um, machine embroidery threads you want to use and it will coordinate perfectly. And that's what we've done here. I used a green and a blue and one of the darker pinks that, that came with this. And um, then finally, if you don't, aren't a machine embroiderer or, and, or you just, you, you like the hand look, which was on the original garment for Kent State, it actually had little, um, little um, French dots sewn. Here I did little, um, um, bullion roses and you can do that as well and to make it a little bit easier to do and so it stabilizes I did little um, just stay stitches in each one of the joints before I put the rows so you don't have to stitch the rows completely through the fabric well now that was a very good trick mm -hmm. Amelia thank you so much this oh, was just welcome. so much fun to see how you took the antique bubble and modernized it, <laughs> it well it's there's nothing new in sewing there's nothing new but if you look back and find some some cute little things in your antique clothing you can come up with some great ideas thank you and now we have some machine embroidery techniques to share I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my friend, Denise Applegate Schober. Denise is with Cactus Punch. Denise, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Martha. Oh, these beautiful things. Talk to us about it. <laughs> well, this is a, a toweling and I purchased it at a, at a sewing store by the yard and I've um, done wing needle on it. I've done wing needle with embroidery and wing needle well, by the machine. Wing needle with the embroidery. Yep, actually this Gorgeous. is all wing needle here too. Okay. And then just a straight wing needle on the machine with a specialty stitch. To hem it. Now, mm -hmm. it looks like there's some twin needle there. There is twin needle also. Oh. A lot of people don't realize you can use a wing needle or twin needle with your embroidery. And the wonderful benefit is because of the wide opening we have where our um, foot is and our needle goes into, we can use a wing needle or a twin needle based on the size opening that we have. And this beautiful wing needle work to hem stitch this beautiful napkin. And actually, it is hem stitching. The wing needle entredo is hem stitching. Originally, the old hem stitching machines. They used to do it by hand. I'm so glad we oh, have it on oh our my, machines. Oh, yes, and I'm glad we have <laughs> wing needles. <laughs> so let's go over and we'll talk about what we have here, okay. Martha, today. The most important thing is that you have 
the needles. So we have a twin needle, and this twin needle is based on the width of our opening of our machine where our needle goes in and out. So if you have a seven millimeter opening, you could use a six millimeter needle for twin stitching with embroidery. This is a hundred or 120 uh, wing needle, and they have a width to the needle. It's a little wider, so you'll want to make sure you don't have a straight stitch plate on when you're using that. We have an 82 thread. It's a very lightweight thread. It's a two-ply, and that makes a nicer hole opening with your wing needle. Some of your needle companies give you instruction sheets, so you'll want to keep that, which explains how to use the needle. And then you'll need stabilizer. So this is like a tissue weight paper stabilizer or a water soluble stabilizer. Now we're going to go to the machine and talk about the design that we did, Martha. And with this, you can notice that we have it basted in the hoop with the basting stitch around a water soluble stabilizer. And the end of this is not finished yet. So it's just a raw edge. And when we move over in a second to where the edging is, we're going to show that we fold it over the edge and we've pressed it. So this pressed edge now is where we'll do our hemming stitch, you called it? Hem stitching, oh yes. The so hemming. we'll do that right here. <laughs> Wing okay. needle hemming, entredeau, whatever. And then you'll want some scissors to trim that edge once you get to that spot. So let's get started here on a couple other little tips that I have. One is the foot that you use is very important. Now these three feet have different techniques that you use them for. The first two here have edges to them. So when you slide down, if I just slide this foot, it stays right tight to that edge and I can drive straight. <laughs> Same thing here. Difference being a clear and a wider foot and a metal foot. And then this is a standard decorative foot and on the back side it's tooled to do decorative stitches. So you could use any of those feet depending on what you want to do. Now, I, I kind of do things a little different than most people, and I did a wing needle on a sweater. Ooh. Okay. Oh, so this pretty. sweater, the wing needle effect was done here and here, and then a, a, almost like a filigree. I know there's a special name for this. This interior. Filigree sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> interior piece. But it's okay to do a sweater and you'll get the wing needle effect not quite as deep as you would like on a natural cotton like our towels and our things are. And this was the same embroidery collection that the flowers came from that we showed earlier on our towels. You know, this is absolutely beautiful. And I noticed that this has the outline stitch. It almost looks like shadow embroidery, although it isn't, because it has the outline stitch. And you know, Denise, this, the wing needle hemming has, has always been one of my very favorite parts of heirloom sewing and now then we're doing massive machine work uh, uh, embroidery it's so wonderful to have the wing needle work done there too and add it to those i i just love the beauty and of I it never dreamed we would do wing needle on a sweater yes <laughs> denise thank you so much and now i'd like to share a piece from my vintage collection with you I love little summer dresses. This is absolutely one of my favorites. Very unusual, really, to find something in a fabric, in a colored fabric, and this is a beautiful peach silk batiste. I love the little tucks on the little collar. Now let me hold this up to show you exactly how this dress is made. The tucks hold in the fullness all the way across the front. Most of these tucks are released tucks, but some of the tucks do go all the way down, uh, down to the bottom of the dress. It's always fun to look at the back, I think, and in this case, the back is exactly like the front with a beautiful little tucked collar and then the little tucks, the release tucks, and then some of the tucks go all the way down to the bottom of the dress. What an absolutely adorable little summer sundress. I have a letter here I'd like to read, with, read for you. Members of Mountain Glory Quilters Guild and the quilting class at McDowell, North Carolina County Senior Citizens Group made fabro fabric bingo cards. These were made into a quilt and given through First Baptist Church in Marion, North Carolina to a family of 10 in Purlington, Mississippi. Members of First Baptist Church have made several mission trips to Purlington to rebuild houses after the Katrina hurricane. Many of these 
women in this group have also made quillows for foster children and chemo scars for cancer patients. Uh, Rose, thank you for sending this letter. And I'd like to say thank you to all of the ladies at McDowell, North Carolina County Senior Citizen for all this work you're doing to help those in need in Mississippi and other places too. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I hope you've had fun and I would like to invite you to come back next time.